everybody welcome well welcome back to the channel today we're going to talk about well we're finally going to start talking about satellite i know it's been a while so i don't know i i am like really excited to get into this to start talking about images like this one and to start breaking it down we're going to start talking this is going to be a series of videos it's going to be kind of like our storm anatomy guides that we did 20 of it's going to be like our radar series our storm spotting see it's going to be like all those we're going to have a lot of continuous series where we build on education we teach concepts we do each video has something different with that said i want to get on with this video right here because i think this one i'm excited because we're going to look at a couple of loops this is from a summertime system and we're going to learn a few things this first one let's go to the full window view and you can see there's a lot to talk about here already right so I want to just uh, let's stop this. We're gonna bring it back, and I just want to start. Uh, let's draw over a couple of things here, really quick. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna notice is there looks to be a boundary right through here, but also like there's obviously a lot of stuff happening back up in here too, right? And also down in here. So there's a lot going on here. There's also looks to be like some uh, clouds here back here and then there's a lot of scattered cumulus through here and also going down this way so there's a lot going on on this image right i just want to break that down really quick so with that said let's go forward a couple let's let's loop it so you can see how all those things are happening right there so uh just just kind of quickly showing you the quick loop through everything so we can then break it down a little bit better okay so with that said let's let's move here uh so we started here let's move right into here okay so look just just uh from here to here and you're gonna notice a couple of things the first thing i want to point out at least is this right here you can see uh you can already see some storms trying to bubble here uh, you, you're looking for this. You're looking for uh, little signs like that. There's a couple of ways to tell if you've got uh, a bit taller of a storm. This one actually, uh, there's a couple of really cool examples here. First off, that right there, that's a storm shadow. Th those are shadows under the clouds. Uh, the, the thing that you can tell with that, whenever they're separated from the clouds like this a little bit, uh, I don't know if I can zoom in. It doesn't look like I can zoom in. But y you can tell that, hey, wait a second. These things are uh, pretty high off the ground, which is important because you can tell if a storm is high based or not, right? So you can already tell that these storms are going to be pretty high based to begin with. And you can also see there's like a boundary here and there's a generalized area of lift right through here. And also you can see these, these are kind of getting agitated back here, but uh, you, as you saw in the loop, they kind of disappear. I'll talk about that in a second. And this back here, all of this, this is, the monsoon, southwest monsoon happening. Uh, these are ongoing storms though. Look at these, look at all these right here, right? Uh, these are all ongoing storms. And here you can actually see uh, an orphan anvil right here. Uh, this is like an old storm and it's just firing off anvils right there. So if you know basic storm structure, you know anvil is the area that when a storm tower tops out, it spreads downwind. Well, this is that, okay? so. Uh, so right here, you can see, you can see like pretty persistent attempts right here, but nothing really ever comes of that. What you start seeing are persistent attempts along this boundary right here. And then finally, bam, you just get storms going. And then you have these constantly forming. You see them forming, it's backing up and dying. Okay, so these are a little bit shorter lived. We'll talk about that in a second. But what I wanna really touch on now uh, let's talk about how each of these environments is different and how you can use satellite to determine that because I think this is really cool. Okay, so I pay attention to, I want you to pay attention to two areas, this area right here and this area right here. Okay, just give you a couple times to look at it really closely. I'll even go forward, backwards, going forwards. Okay, now I want to point this out. Okay, there are two main differences you're seeing here. First off, the first one is that you're seeing this right here. I'm gonna get this back up so you can see it. This, this is a fine line. This is an outflow boundary that is pushing west. 
it is just like pushing west these storm towers right here they're spreading like a circle around the updraft right here so this area right back here this whole region you can tell one very important thing from this it has weak wind shear compared to this over here why is this wind shear stronger why is there a greater severe weather threat over here well you can tell look this is the updraft this is the overshooting top and look how the anvil is spreading downwind this is a sign of stronger upper level wind stronger wind shear again you can see this here again it is also doing the same thing and these here these are kind of a middle ground it's spreading downwind but they're kind of weak you know so and this one also but yeah you can see this right here you can tell just by that alone which one has the better environment you can just tell because these uh over here to the west you can see that outflow boundary right here just it's just shifting north and west these things are just spinning an outflow they form they die they form they die it's just that keeps happening but this over here it forms and it moves okay and i cut this off a little early i probably should have let it i probably should have taken another one a little later but you can tell how both of these are working in tandem with each other and you can see how this right here this boundary also tries to go toward the end and you just can never get anything uh too robust there let's go to the very end because i want to point out a couple of things other things too uh a, another key tell for like how strong an updraft is on satellite uh in terms of like storm chasing at least i have a pretty general role here um this right here uh let's do an arrow the difference between this one right here and the difference between this one right here uh or actually this one right here what what, what would you say the difference is uh well i mean it seems obvious right it seems obvious this one's bigger than this one uh this one has uh it's spreading much wider which is a sign that you have a bit of a stronger collection of updrafts than this one right here which kind of just spreads very narrowly anytime you see that you can tell that an updraft's struggling against the cap against something else because if it's not just hitting that equilibrium level and just spreading downwind it means your updrafts aren't as strong okay and you see that back here too where these just <laughs> no one make fun of my drawing uh but you can see how those are also uh just not spreading uh downwind as much right you can just kind of see how they're just kind of hitting and spreading and, and just they're, they're just kidding dying and then they're just going downwind it's it's not the same thing right it's not the same thing and this q field right here looks sometimes agitated but it really just goes away uh the difference between i think trying to determine when you have a uh serious storm threat uh it's like this time of the day right here we've stopped it in the middle of the day or so you know in the middle of storm formation these are already starting to attempt you can see little orphan anvils all through here <laughs> that means these storms are forming going up and then dying but they're spreading downwind so there's actual attempts you don't see that over here right you don't see that down here even or even down here you don't see it and as you move forward you don't see any of that happening until the very end down here you see one finally start going right there but you don't see those attempts down here to the south there so that's a clear way to tell hey which where are the where's the environment better this loop it gives you a great example of how you can kind of judge storm environments simply by looking at satellite hey did you like this video i hope you like this video because there is so much more coming where this one came from we're going to talk satellite a lot i've got tons of satellite loops we're going to look at and we're going to learn from i hope this one was a good conceptual overview of like how to tell when q fields are going where the best environment is all that this was a pretty classic example of that we're going to have a lot more right up here you, you see a button that says follow if you see a button that says subscribe you want to do both of those things because we're gonna have a lot more so remember this weather's for everybody that includes you satellite it's a lot of fun we're gonna have a lot of fun teaching it so we'll see you next time